Hey everyone, welcome to my next lesson about parameters in Revit API. Make sure to watch all the previous parts. And before getting started, if you want to learn all topics regarding Revit API in depth and enroll in my paid Revit API course, you can reach out to me via email in the pinned comment. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, like the video and leave some comments. So let's get going. We've learned with you how to get parameters from our elements, how to access their value, how to set their values, and all of this kind of operations. But how do we work with project parameters? Can we add a project parameter to our document, to our project? Can we interact with share parameter files? How to add like groups, parameters to it, and all of these manipulations. This is something that we will cover in these lessons. So before getting started, let's even let's refresh our memory about uh, about parameters and how do they work. So we have what is called a project parameter here, and here we have a list of all project parameters that we want to have in our document in our project. You go with add, and here you have two types of parameters. So you can either do a pro add a project parameter or add a shared parameter. So you can store parameters in a separate file and add them from, the, from there. What kind of information do we need? So the parameter that we create can be associated with multiple categories. So for example, we can say, I wanna have a parameter for walls and I wanna have a parameter for floors as well. So one parameter can be associated with multiple categories. We need to pass a name for this. Also, we can we need to define whether it should be a type parameter or an instance parameter. So whether this parameter will be like in this palette. So if I kind of uh, close it off. So if I create a wall, instance parameters will usually be will usually be located there and type parameter type parameters here. So it depends on what kind of parameter do we want to add. Also, we can specify its type and its group. So we kind of refreshed our memory about what we have here, uh, like how to add this and what information do we need. Why I always start with explaining like how is that done in Revit, how that can be done in Revit, because it's pretty much you can associate it it a lot with how we do this via API. So that is crucially important for you. So you will ask yourself correct questions. And the first question that we should ask ourselves is who is responsible for uh, for retrieving these parameters? Like who is responsible for uh, like getting these ones? So what are we going to do there is that we're going to go to the documentation there uh, so we're going to go to documentation and if you go to the document class, so here we're going to go to the document class and what I want to have here is we can check uh, from the properties what parameters are accessible in the document. So I know what property it is, what property is responsible for this and that property is called parameter bindings. So as you can see, when you reach the property parameter bindings, you get an instance of a binding map class. You get the object of binding map. And here you can actually read what it's responsible for. So the parameters binding map contains all the parameter bindings that exist in the Autodesk Revit project. So you may notice some stuff like we can insert it, so now you kind of see what is happening here. So we can access, uh, we can access these project parameters. And here add was actually was replaced with insert. So we're inserting this. We're adding new parameter to the project. And we have two overloads for this by using definition and binding or we can use definition binding and built-in parameter group. 
And now you may be like, like, what is the definition? What is the binding? What is the built-in parameter group? So the first thing that we need to cover is the definition. So that is something that we'll cover in the current lesson, because I really want to drive the point home, uh, like the difference between a parameter and a definition. What we have learned so far that, for example, if we take into consideration a wall or a floor, for example, let me model a floor, we can reach some parameters from it. Like, let's suppose we want to change the mark parameter. We can easily open Revit lookup. Again, I have this here and go snoop current selection. Make sure that you do everything fast. So make sure that uh, you have shortcuts for it. So it, it can be easily accessed. So you go snoop current selection, you reach the parameters and here you can find the parameter that you need. We know that each parameter, right? So if we have five instances of the floor, each of them will have its own parameter object. It will be a new instance of a parameter, right? And that is logical because what we do with parameters that we can get the values and we can set their values. So for example, mark parameter can be different for each floor. So that is not a class that is shared across uh, all elements, right? So each element has its own parameters. Like floor, if you have five floors, each of them has its own instance of the parameter object. But what is common across all of them? And that is definition. So that definition class is actually telling us what is the name of this parameter? What is the parameter group it's under? What is the parameter type of it? What is the unit type? Like what is the built-in uh, like whether it's built-in parameter or not, ID, all of this great information. So we can have five floors with the parameter mark. Parameter itself is going to be new for each floor, but each, but all of the mark parameters, they're kind of described by the definition. So this is something common across all the mark parameters. So what is common across all of them? It's the name, so we have mark, it's common. The parameter group they're under, so they're under identity data. Uh, what is their type? Their text. What is their unit type? UD number, right? So you can actually read this information of them. That can be quite helpful. So even if I create a wall, right? For example, I already have a wall. It's also going to be under identity data because they're described by one parameter here and obviously you can also read their id so if you go to parameters you find mark you can read their id so you can understand if that is actually the same uh, the same parameter so this is something that you should be aware of what you can actually see as well is that we have definition then we have internal definition and then we kind of stop but what if we go to the documentation and before researching other parameters that we need to pass here, other arguments that we need to pass here, we're going to research our definition and see the hierarchy. This is really important for you to understand it because we have, as you remember, we have project parameters and we have share parameters. So as you can see here, we have a base class called definition. So that is the base class of, of, of you can think of a definition as just a wrapper for your parameters. It's just a, something that describes them. I would, I, would, I would put it that way, something that describes them. As you can see, it has all of this information, name, group, type, unit type. And here we have external definition and internal definition. And as the name implies, internal definition is the project parameter. But external definition, these are the parameters that are live in the share parameter file. So if I close it off and I go to manage share parameters, Gates telling me that I don't have a share parameter file. So here, if you create, you can easily create a share parameter file. At, and at the end of the day, that is a simple txt file. It's just a txt, a file with an extension of txt. And here you can create your group, for example, architecture, structure, so on and so forth. And then you can add group that you want to be them under. And you can simply add 
new parameters and defined uh, their definition. And again, these definitions that are stored in here and definitions just describe uh, the parameters. They're not actually like the parameters themselves, right? So they're just something common across uh, uh, across your parameters. Again, because if you have a wall of even a share parameter, let's suppose you create a share parameter and you add this and you want to use it for a wall. Of course, for each instance of the wall, you would need to have a new instance of a parameter because it should have it can have new values, some other, different values, and so on and so forth. But the definition will be the same for them because it just like the description of this. It just tells us uh, what it looks like. That's it for this lesson. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and have a beautiful day.